here's what I'm hearing in the NCAA investigation. This really is about making uh, Jeremy Pruitt happy. And what is that going to take? I think it's going to take the NCAA to have a forward thinking view of this. And I think the NCAA wants Tennessee to be good. So this is what I'm hearing, Caleb, is t- the NCAA wants Tennessee to be good. It's one of their bigger programs. It's, it's a program that I think it was pretty obvious when they're better, uh, college football is better. So I think the NCAA wants things to work out with Jeremy Pruitt. I don't mean this to sound mean, okay? But ultimately the question is, how smart is Jeremy Pruitt? Is he willing to take a four or five year show cause? Or does he say, nope, I don't want a single bit of show cause. I want to be able to go get a job in college football tomorrow. If he sticks by those guns, then not only does he have a problem, because I don't think the NCAA is going to be empathetic whatsoever. I don't think they're going to sympathize with this position. And I think Tennessee is not going to provide any leeway in terms of what he did. And I believe that's the direction it's going to go. So ultimately, I believe that you're going to see Tennessee, based off what I've been told, get a very minor sort of sanction in addition to what they have already done. But you're going to see Jeremy Pruitt get hammered pretty good. I'm not saying Donnie Tyndall. That was like a once in a generation, right? Ten years. Ten years. That was insane. I mean, I've never even heard of that before. But I, I think three years is a bare minimum. And if he can live with that and go play poker or go find a place in the NFL, good for him. But Travis says football will have passed him by in four years. Well, he won't have forgotten how to pay players, which is legal now, <laughs> Travis. So the question then um, becomes – So you, even though Jeremy Pruitt himself may not be smart enough, don't you think he has smart representatives? I don't know. You kind of are who you associate with. I mean, and also here's the other point. Look, Jeremy Pruitt was fired for calls with a show calls penalty. What if he needs the money? I mean, that's a genuine question. That's true. I mean, we think about people making hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars in this case, but he didn't get the show cause penalty. What if he does need the money? Yeah, you would you would think after a career of making probably an average what of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year average, even going back before the pay got that high, considering, you know, he probably got a couple of paychecks that were more than he was worth. You would like to think you would have some money saved up, but I wouldn't rule it out. Yeah. What if, I mean, and what if there's the expectation of what if he, when he moved to Tennessee and what if he spent and invested and put money on the assumption that even if he got fired, he would get the buyout. So by not, you know what I mean? Like he made investments based on a revenue stream that he thought was going to be there. That's not there. I mean, you're, you're an investor. I'm not, but doesn't that happen? I mean, isn't that one of the, deadliest things a person or a company can do is invest based on a revenue stream that they think is going to be there? Yes, I would suggest not doing that. Uh, <laughs> I would highly suggest not doing that. But could he have done that? Yeah. And could Casey, his wife, uh, love Neiman Marcus? I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's a million different ways that you can blow through cash. But don't forget this. I mean, you bring this up, not to get too abstract and out of sports, but this isn't a great time in investments in our country. Unless he invested in crypto in de- December, which I almost did, and I should have. But unless he invested in crypto in December, he ain't walking around with more pocket money than he had a year ago. No, and he probably, if he invested in crypto, did it when he took over in 2018. And that was, that, yeah, that's probably, you lost money if you invested then. So Yeah, the only time to invest in crypto is when the economy's doing really, really poorly. And then people go in that route. Somebody told me that in December. I passed on it, missed on a 50% return. But that's just me. Well, can you, can you – sorry, I just have to go on a side tangent on the fraud of crypto because the whole point is it's it's a new form of trust and a new form of currency. No, it's not. You're selling it based on how it's backed in the financial sector. By definition, it's not a new form of currency. 
Well, it's true. Still tied but, to the uh, dollar. Chips are. So Mr. Jones points out Pruitt is a poker player. Now, Pruitt is a poker player, and this was brought up to me as well. He went and played in the professional poker series for a while, um, and I guess that was a better option in the NFL, which he probably didn't have. Listen, he's a recruiter. That's what he does. I'm not saying that as a joke because he paid players, but that's that's who he is. He's not coming up with incredible schemes that Nick Saban's like, oh, my gosh, I've never seen anything like this before. Where did you possibly get this? That's not happening, okay? So he is ultimately a – he's – very, he's a slightly more X's and O's talented coach than Chuck Smith. You remember Chuck Smith? I remember Chuck Smith. Okay, Chuck Smith could teach edge pass rushing. He was very good at that. NFL players would pay him to teach him that. I, I really think if if Jeremy Pruitt had one gift, that was it. He didn't care if you put your hand down. He didn't care if you're coming from a two point stance. He didn't care about any of that. He just said, get to the pass rusher, have leverage, be able to run at full speed with your body parallel to the ground. It's really smart, insightful stuff. The one time I uh, had a chance to pull him aside and talk to him. But that's it. That's that's where the resume pretty much ends. That and also not just being a great – there's two types of recruiting. There's actually being able to recruit the kids and you know the kids wanting to play for you, which Pruitt was good at. Pruitt, we have to give him this. He was a good talent evaluator. I mean, he would actually be a great NFL scout. He can he could spot talent a mile away. I, I'll give him that. He found Cedric Tillman when nobody did. Uh, agreed. Um, the, the question is, if you go to the NFL and you're a scout, you get paid a small percentage of the money that an assistant coach does, and you don't ever get to participate in the big games. You know, you're just at ballparks throughout the South, uh, watching Friday Night Football, you're scouting people and uh, Friday night football, Saturday night football. You're, you're scouting people and you're going to practice. And that's not a very sexy job, is it? No, it's not. It's not. But it could put you on the GM track. Jeremy Pruitt is a GM. <laughs> wow. Talk about one bad hire. That would be. 